coffee. coffee. The question everybody wants to know is, is coffee good for you or bad for you? Well, coffee culture permeates society, so I don't blame you. Featured on every corner of a busy city intersection and quaint village high streets, coffee shops are a common landmark. Social media is also awash with images of influencers capturing that dreamy milk pour into their daily cup. But with coffee holding such a prominent role in daily life, we really should know if it's going to benefit us or damage our health. I'm Dr. Candy, a GP and a mum to two, and I talk about little actions that make a big difference to your overall health and wellness. So is coffee good for your health? Well, I hate to give the discussion away so early, but the straightforward answer is, there is no straightforward answer. The information out there seems to be contradictory. Even health authorities can't make up their mind. For example, in 1991, the International Agency for Research on Cancer, part of the World Health Organization, added coffee to a list of possible carcinogens. Yikes! Newer research, however, has now reversed that. And some studies suggest that the antioxidants found in coffee reduces the chances of developing some types of cancer. So the complete opposite. Studies are nevertheless being conducted all the time, so the likelihood of a further flip-flop in opinion from the scientific community is a real possibility. So let's focus on what we do know. Coffee contains a cocktail of compounds that affect our mind and our bodies. One of these chemicals is caffeine, and that's what makes coffee the morning beverage of choice for many. It helps us wake up, but how does it do so? A chemical called adenosine builds up in our bodies during our waking hours, and that signals that we need to sleep and causes that sleep, drowsy, can't stop yawning effect. Now, caffeine binds to these adenosine receptors in our brain, and that stops the sleepiness signal from getting through, hence helping us stay awake and alert. Great if you have a long day ahead of you. But not only does it banish the yawns, it also helps the brain function because it gets those synapses firing and firing quickly. But you need balance, right, as ever. Too much caffeine or coffee consumed too close to bedtime can inhibit our natural sleep patterns. And this causes grogginess and that feeling of needing more caffeine to combat the poor night's sleep, creating a cyclical caffeine habit that damages our natural sleep rhythms. Caffeine also stimulates our central nervous system, which can help us get whatever it is we need to do done. <laughs> it makes us more alert and hyper-focused, and that said, overdoing it with the espressos can make us more anxious and jittery. Too much caffeine can even cause an irregular heartbeat and higher blood pressure. So yes, this overstimulation could be dangerous for those who already have high blood pressure or anxiety or potentially any heart problems. Have you ever heard of polyphenols? Well, you might do if you've listened to my earlier videos, but I'll forgive you if you haven't. They don't get near enough the same airtime as caffeine does. But polyphenols are also found in coffee. They're found also in all sorts of fruits and vegetables too, so pretty healthy, right? Polyphenols decrease blood pressure and reduce the risk of heart attacks and strokes. Some research shows that polyphenols increases the blood supply to the brain too, reducing the chances of developing dementia. Are you watching your weight? Well, some studies show that coffee can cause a short-term rise in your metabolic rate. So this means that it can raise the effectiveness of which your body's able to burn energy. So you're more likely to be at a healthy weight if your metabolism is firing on all cylinders. You can also harness coffee's energizing properties to push yourself that little bit harder during your workouts or at the gym. That said, if you enjoy your coffee laden with cream, sugar, and flavored syrups, then that does add serious calories. And we all know that excess calories leads to excess weight gain. So what's the takeaway? Should we drink coffee or not? Well, as with most health and wellness conundrums, it's a balancing act. Get in tune with how your body and mind feel after a cup or two, and try not to go too overboard. If you're feeling jittery or drifting off to sleep is difficult, then experiment with the reduction of your consumption or have a trial period without it. Easier said than done, right? There are some caveats though. If you are pregnant, if you're a child, you have high blood pressure, anxiety, or insomnia, then you need to be much more cautious when working coffee into your routine. Speak to your healthcare provider about your specific needs. In my experience, I think I've drunk a sip of coffee maybe once in my life and remained wired long past my A&E shift was over that I never touched it again. So if like me, you've managed to avoid any social pressures to partake in the world's most consumed drink, then good for you. You avoid any negative side effects and you can instead source the micronutrients that coffee brings from a well-balanced diet that contains lots of fruit, vegetables, and water. 
But if you already enjoy a cup of joe and you can't envision your life without it, then don't sweat it. There are plenty of benefits, but you just have to use that balanced approach. Not too much, not too close to bedtime. And don't forget to take it easy on that mocha frappuccino with extra pump of syrup and extra whipped cream on top. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much for listening to Life of Dr. Candy and stay tuned for more little actions that make a big difference to your overall health and wellness.